Ladies and gentlemen, Tati Avance here, and welcome to a news update. First off, as most of you know, 3.0 has started its rollout. It's currently at a very early stage on the PTU. It's been seeing updates daily, nothing too massive. Now the micro patch is there, it does make a big difference. We've been seeing small patches varying from 50 to half a gig in size. We've had a extensive update on ship progression. This falls in line with the Star Citizen anniversary. Let's start from the top from what we've seen so far. On the Anvil side, we've seen the Hawk. This is a bounty hunting ship. The idea is to capture players, NPCs, dead or alive. The reward will be different depending if they're alive or dead. Looks like an interesting ship. On the Anvil line as well, we had an update on the Terrapin, the military exploration ship. It's a very, very, very tough ship, hence the name the Terrapin. It hunkers down basically into a mode that makes it really, really tough. This doesn't mean that it has a massive firepower by any means. The idea is, is to fly in, get the information you need, and then escape. And at the same time, taking a lot of hits and weathering the storm. I actually own a Terrapin as well. I really like the look of the ship. Next in line is probably one of the most anticipated ships so far, and that's the Karak. That's a exploration ship, deep space exploration. It comes with three modular bays. On day one, they will just be cargo, but later on down the line, they will end up being different modules. We haven't got any information on what these modules are really gonna be yet. I'm sure we'll find out later on down the line. That's no major issue when you look at the Karak as its entirety. It does come with quite an array of tools, you could say. Being an ex-military ship, it's quite capable to defend and put out a good amount of firepower. It's capital ship in size. It comes with a small drop ship for planetary entry, a rover, small drones, repair bay, medical bay, star mapping station. It also comes with solar panels as well, so self-sustaining this, deep space, long journeys, and clearly you're gonna get a rover as well. I own this ship as well. When I first started out following Star Citizen, if you've watched all my videos, I think I started with the 325A, and then once I saw the Constellation, I then bought the Constellation, purely on the basis that Star Citizen for me is definitely off the back of the big series like Star Trek and so on. The thought of me owning my own exploration ship is where I sort of sit inside of Star Citizen. For me, the Karak, absolutely awesome. Continuing down the line of Anvil, we've seen the Hurricane. Now the Hurricane is a fast attacking ship with a massive loadout. Not necessarily gonna be able to take any damage, the idea is to shoot and scoot, I suppose. Looks really good. That would sort of fit my gameplay as well. I'd rather just fly in there and blow them up and fly off, to be honest, sure, rather than uh, getting into a uh, five, ten minute dogfight. Probably wait until we see a little bit more information on that and it gets flushed out and maybe even fly it before I purchase that one. More than likely, I'll probably buy it in game. Moving on to the Aegis line, we've seen the Hammerhead. This was quite a surprise, this one. I didn't expect this. I didn't see it coming. It's a gunboat. I know you're probably saying, oh, not another ship with loads of guns. This one is slightly different. I think it's more like a floating sort of platform with absolutely loads of guns on it. It comes with six man turrets and two unmanned turrets. Four guns on each man turret. It also has four missile bays with 32 missiles in total. It does have cargo space, but I should imagine that's more than likely gonna be cargo space for replenishing the missiles and ammunition if needed. It also has space for a rover as well. This is gonna be, this is gonna be quite a main line ship in organizations, I should imagine, supporting large capital ships. And I've no doubt this is probably gonna be one of the most or one of the most feared ships in the game. Continuing on with Aegis, we've got the Reclaimer. Now I know a lot of people have been waiting to see more content on the Reclaimer. We've got to see lots of lots of video footage of in-game animations on, and also some information on how the Reclaimer's gonna work. I like this one purely on the basis of its unique game mechanic. The ability to go to maybe a site where there's been a big battle and you go and salvage and crush up all the ships. It could be on a planet, 
a derelict ship that you crush and I've no doubt some ships will crush and make you more money along the way. It doesn't have a massive loadout by any means from a weaponry point of view, enough to defend yourself, but at the same time, you're not going to be a significant threat to anyone else, unless it's a fight between a reclaimer and a reclaimer. <laughs> and that would be a case of who's going to eat each other first. Continuing on, we've seen quite a bit of information as well on the javelin. Now the javelin is a destroyer. It's not multifunctional. It's mainly focused on being a destroyer. It's absolutely massive. I think it's twice the size of an Idra, so absolutely huge. Massive guns on it. 12 torpedoes. It's got size 12 torpedoes. They're the biggest torpedoes in the game. I've heard rumors that each torpedo is about the size of a, an Aurora. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see a character model standing next to one of these torpedoes. Hadn't seen any images yet, but we'll have to wait and see for later on. It's got three decks, large side guns, and a flight deck as well for a ship. This is definitely going to be a large group of individuals or organization ran ship. We've had a small update on the Tumbril Cyclone. This is a land vehicle. It's a two-man vehicle. It can be three. If you equip the rear section with a gun, obviously it turns into three, but mainly it's two. The other modules you've got as well, which is EMP, cargo missiles, and obviously the gun. So a little bit of a, a variant there for you. The idea of this vehicle is very, very fast, very, very rugged, Humvee-like vehicle, but at the same time, it is modular. Moving on to the Banu Merchantman. Now the Banu Merchantman is a flying market. Now on the ship you will have a VIP negotiating room where selected people can go into a negotiating room and negotiate for better deals. Everyone else will just purchase from the normal market. This is basically just hosting your own market somewhere in space selling goods. I did actually think about this for a while and it's quite a good idea actually because there's going to be parts of space where you might just need some materials and you don't want to go all the way back and if you can see these floating about the place and just go up to it and buy some goods it would be really really handy. That does mean that you will be responsible of replenishing your own stocks and making decisions yourselves on what you feel you should be stocking based on physical demand. So there's going to be quite a lot of gameplay. It's not just a floating market and you sell stuff. It's going to be quite a involved process of you ordering stuff, getting deliveries, paying people for deliveries. Pretty cool. A lot of people are interested in this. And also we get to see an alien ship. So totally different concept work on this one. Next in line is the Origin series, the Jump Works. We've seen a lot of information over the last few weeks on the 600i. This is seen as a direct competitor to the Constellation, the sort of the luxury ships side and exploration. It's got one module that can be swapped out as well. I think it, it currently comes with a luxury module. You will be able to swap that out for a exploration module, which gives you scanning rover and a few other little bits as well. I've no doubt that Star Citizen later on down the line will be adding to a lot of the modules that we have with all the ships. And I like that. I like the fact that it makes the ships you select a little bit more dynamic in gameplay. If you start getting a little bit stagnant of what you're doing, you can then swap out a module and then change the gameplay with your current ship. Continuing down the line of the Origin Jump Works, the 890 Jump as well. We've had a little bit of an update on that. Not making a massive amount of progress on that one. There is dependencies on the 600 to help out with the artwork. The 890 Jump is a luxury ship for touring. I think the best way to look at this ship would be a flying hotel or diplomatic ship. It has good shields and good weapons as well and don't expect it to be weak by any means. It will be able to defend itself and it will be very very fast as well getting away. We also had an update on the Mustang series as well and I think I've actually missed one as well. The 300 series we know is having a overhaul as well but the Mustang series is having a rework as well. We have got a status for each one of these ships as well. Some of them being in concept only like the Banu Merchantman and also the 890 Jump. And that's purely on the basis that there's dependencies. What you need to keep in mind when you're looking at the ships and the pipeline, if the pipeline says it's going into artwork, going into art, final artwork is quite near to the end, i.e. going from final artwork going into sort of flight ready. There's a big difference between something going into final art when it's a Karak than something going into final art 
when it's a Mustang. The time difference between the two is clearly significant. For me, looking at it, really, looking at all the ships and where they are in the pipeline, I wouldn't be surprised to see pretty much the majority of them in the first quarter of next year, minus the ones that are in concept only, like the Banu and maybe the 890 Jump as well. My guess would be, looking at the pipeline and the ships we've just spoken about, minus the concepts ones, that there's a high chance that the majority of these ships should be finished by the end of the first quarter of next year. And I've no doubt that we're going to see quite a few of them very, very early in the year as well. So overall, I think that's pretty good news. Looking at the pipeline, guys, and looking how far these have progressed, we're not looking at animations with the majority of these ships they've shown us so far. We're looking at in-game footage with the majority of them. They look very, very far progressed, which is a good thing. So lots going on in the ship side. So next on the agenda is land ownership. Star Citizen have announced that we can purchase land poles. What these poles do, they give you the ability to place it down somewhere on a UEE planet, take a small chip from that claim, and you can register that as your claim. All being that that's in UEE space, the UEE will defend your claim to some extent. Now, what's ruffled people's feathers a little bit is the fact that Star Citizen are selling the land claims. They're not actually selling the land, they're selling the pole to claim the land, if that makes any sense. You still have to go out and put your claim down and claim it. It will mean that when the doors of Star Citizen opens, everyone's just going to run and find some land. I'm not overly bothered with this, to be honest with you. It doesn't really affect anything. Star Citizen have already explained, even if the total amount of backers put in a claim on land, that it wouldn't even complete one moon stroke planet. There's nothing stopping you when the game goes live, no matter how many ships or how much you've invested in Star Citizen to go into the game, earn some cash, make a claim yourself. And I imagine that most people won't even bother with the claims. There's so much to do inside of Star Citizen. If you did have a claim, you could spend probably weeks just focusing on your claim and mining your claim. And there's so much more to Star Citizen than just having a base. You've got exploration, salvage, there's so much more to do that I think, actually, I think it's something that I will experience at some point, but it's something that I'm probably not really going to do right at the start of the game. Because I don't want to be stuck in one place. I want to explore the place and experience Star Citizen and not necessarily just build a base right at the start. So let me know what you think about the land claims and I suppose let me know what you think about Star Citizen selling the land claim poles now rather than waiting until the game goes live. Let me know in the comments. And the last thing on the agenda today, guys, if you're looking to join a Star Citizen organization, you want to talk about Star Citizen and also play 3.0, check out the link in the description below. That's everything from me. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.